This is Canwood Gallery, and on your left is the Turbine Hall, which is where most of my work was exhibited. This is the, that's the other gallery, which is on two floors. And Stephen's house, who owns it. Just wonderful place. There's the car park down there. And all the lanes that people get lost in. Glenn Morris's angel sculpture. This is the outdoor space, just behind the turbine hall, which is wonderful because it means if people are waiting to come in, they don't have to sit in their cars in a car park somewhere. They can actually sit or wander around and look at this fabulous place and actually see some of the sculptures that are in the grounds, although there are far less sculptures at the moment than there normally are. A lot of them have been taken away. We love this one because it actually it isn't about that, but it really looks as though it could be about social distancing. I thought it would be nice to go and put masks on them. Oh, there's my car. This is, I meant to show you this before, this is one of our, one of our tutor's pieces, Mark Houghton, and it's supposed to frame the landscape you see through it. But when he was giving us the, or we were walking around in the beginning of the exhibition to see who was going to go where, he said he suddenly realised it looked as though a paraglider had um, crash landed. And now I can't see it as anything other than feet sticking up out of the land. But there's all kinds of interesting things around the place. Oops, can't see it now. There we go. One in the tree as well, behind there. And then there's a few in the fields around. There's usually 27 sculptures, but um, because of either because of COVID or winter coming, a lot of them have been taken away. This is the turbine hall, and I'll start with my work. Because uh, why not? These are my um, photographs printed onto aluminium, and. Another couple here. Note. Woohoo! Delighted. This is the video setup with um, the third video playing, which I'm hoping is going to go into a loop. And then moving on to Totty's photographs. Her light box is on the left, and lovely thing which I love of textures and the drain pipes, which is a really nice idea. Three big windows. sale for Totty. And then her work on the other side. Our books. Totty's and mine have got muddled, I'll have to sort that. And my charcoal drawing of the leaning tree. Just going to sort the books now. Some of Kira's sculptures. This one was done for her external partner project, which she was going to do with Kat, who are the environmental people. I can't remember where they're based, but this is all um, based on climate change and damage to the planet. This one is, I can't get back far enough, I'm worried about banging into another one and knocking it over. This one is on flooding. This is drought. You get some beautiful textures with her paint. Fabulous things. And this one is ice melting glaciers and rising water levels, obviously. And then she's got some little slate sculptures which are based on walks that she's done. 
She's done a lot of work. I like the fly next to that one, that's kind of good. The visitor. And then this beauty on the wall, which is again about um, water levels. I think it's based on a river near where she walks. And another lovely piece of work. I'll do these and then come back round. Three more of Kira's. This one had been ousted, but uh, she sold one, so she's brought it, <coughs> brought it back in again. And these amazing things, which we all thought were made of metal, are actually made of paper that she's treated <coughs> and um, put resin in to represent water. But she came through the studio once carrying this one, which is big, and I thought she must be incredibly strong until she actually said it's not bronze, it's paper. And we've got over here, oh yes, there was another one of hers here, a compass, which is basically showing um, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And another piece here, which is the exploded version of the big one. It's all the bits she cut out of this big piece, stuck together like an exploded sculpture. And here's a little sculpture that I bought from her, which I think is lovely. And over here we have one of Amanda's procedural drawings based on meditation and chakras and energy flows. Next to Joe's video, a very, very gruelling video of her. I see that I haven't turned the volume up. Her son, who young son who died of cancer. And this is them burning the x-rays of the cells, her and her daughter. And there are some stills of the film here. And these are the guinea pig suits that they were wearing when they did the um, performance. And the fire pan that they burned the cells and the guinea pig drawing and other things in. I think, um, let's see, I think her son was used as a guinea pig with drugs and it didn't work. So she's obviously understandably not happy about guinea pigs. Um, I noticed her sound isn't working so I'm going to turn off and try to sort that out. This film of Joe's is really moving, very poignant and very hard to watch. And the mala she found by accident goes with it perfectly. Oh, talking through my mask, that's clever. Right, I'm back again, having been up um, showing people around the exhibition and so on. A stream of visitors again, so it's great. It's actually quite busy. And uh, where was I at? Oh, I think I'd come to Amanda's other procedural drawings, which are based on the chakras. There's two, I'll oh, no, just get one at a time. And she did these right at the last minute, crawling around on the floor, um, on her hands and knees, rubbing around the chakra images. And she was actually going to do one in the gallery on the floor and have um, visitors muck in and do it as well. But she decided not to, which is a bit of a shame in a way. Um, here are three of her chakra paintings based on the chakras of those colours, which I can't remember. Um, though she had got seven paintings but couldn't fit them all in. And 
Here is the bigger painting. Oh, I think I didn't show you this one, which is another of Kira's. Every time I go backwards, I'm terrified I'm going to knock something flying. Another of her big sculptures. She's been so prolific and she's got more work in the other gallery, which um, I have, I think, taken a video of before, which you'll see as well. I thought I'd taken this video and it turned out I'd actually been videoing on off and then turning it on on to turn it off. So it didn't work. This is the long view of the gallery. This is the turbine hall. Big space and we were actually quite worried we weren't going to fill it. Because of course, unlike most years, we um, hadn't seen what we were all producing. So we had no idea who'd made what, which was very odd. It's the view of my video again, which you'll get a separate link to on one of my videos. And that's it. That's the Turbine Hall. This is our comments book. There's some really nice comments in here. There's a nice one. I think it was great. I think it worked really well, actually. More of my stuff in the browser and also my cards hanging there. So that is the reception hall, or whatever you'd like to call it. And here's the kitchen. With Joe, who just won the Anthony Sydney Nolan Prize. Telling people about that in there. Very interesting. Right, now into the other gallery. And this is Joe's work here. That's the long view of it. Various sculptures based on the internal workings of taxidermy of birds. So these are like the framework that the taxidermy birds are built on. The sculptures produced from that or inspired by that. And these are made from what would be, I don't know what you call them, but the taxidermy things go inside there, but these are actually filled with Japanese paper. And this one is filled with um, things that you use to stuff birds and so on. Note the Sydney Nolan Award plaque. Very well deserved. Brilliant. It's really innovative work. Great attention to detail. These shelves were actually wood, but Joe wrapped them in velvet and made such a difference. Covid inspired sculpture here. Sadly, her film here isn't working. We can't work out why we've got about three or four of the monitors we can't get to work today, which is a bit of a shame, especially as Dan's bringing in the principal and vice principal later. This is probably my favorite piece of hers, which I was helping her to put together and uh, got souvenir scratches to prove it. Another of Amanda's procedural drawings on the canvas on the wall there. And Tasha's lovely sensitive work. Beautiful work with another monitor that's not working. You can maybe see a 
stitching involved in the sketching, which really brings it to life. Uh, it's such nice mark making. based on maps and walks around the area where she lives and um, it's fascinating stuff. Another of Totti's images. I love her humour. They're sort of bleak but also not. They're, they're funny as well. Another of hers large image here done on Perspex, which works really well. Another of Kira's. And another of Amanda's procedural ones on the wall on the way out. And something I love, the something Kira made from um, bits of glass found in the river near her home and she stuck them together and calls them Dystopian River Elders, which I think is just a great title. And I bought one of them, which is the dog, which is that one. And Totty had already bought this one, which is a really nice one with the bent neck. Right, and then upstairs is another gallery. We're so lucky to have got this space to exhibit in. It's absolutely beautiful. Except for this test, which you won't like. The glass floor gives me the willies too. Some of Jess's drawings on the wall here. Not drawings, photographs, images. Jess does some um, computer-based work. Very clever. I think I could do. And one of Joe's in the, in the top window here. Another of Amanda's on the wall. This one of Kira's, which is very different to her other work, which is all about absence. Can't get back far enough to show it, sadly, with her waving goodbye to her daughters at the station and um, figures cut out so they're there and not there and it's really supposed to be displayed with light shining through it so it's a shame not seeing it at its best advantage. More of Totties. This, believe it or not, if you've heard of it, is the the Carl Andre bricks um, which cost around £140,000, I believe, but they're kept permanently in the gallery. And Jess's monitor we can't get to work, which relates to this. Shame that's not functional at the moment, but it might be when I come in next time. A, guess who this is? Another thing we weren't allowed to move. Yep, Tracy Emin. This is Johnny's work. A bit hard to get this all in because it projects across and downwards. Another of Jess's works here. And the upside down projection of her other work. Which you actually look at through here. I'm going to stop now and try to catch a bit with more writing on it. 
because it's a, an amazing effect. I'm going to try and catch some of this from the beginning for you. It's called Buddy. Buddy knows everything about you and becomes a part of your home. This is Buddy when the internet starts to go wrong. And here is the amazing seed pod sculpture, which goes off every 10 minutes and makes everyone jump, because as the tutor said, it sounds just like a horse pissing. Enter Kira, stage right. I cannot find the stickers anywhere. Oh, sorry, I was going up to look for this. sold our painting. Yeah. But Dan wouldn't let me put up. So. Oh, I found, what, the one by the loo? Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I knew that was worth putting out. I know, they love this. And they, they're both, they're into boats and they sort of oh, like water. That's, and... that's what I love about it. Yeah. Great. So that's, I'm glad I put it back.